Hello, thank you for joining us on the newly launched 8020 Marketing Podcast. My name is Agi Patricia Turomwe, I specialize in public relations, and today we are joined with Benon Mascot, the Deputy General Manager, Sales and Marketing, Motor Care Uganda Limited. Ben has quite a CV. Before then, he was with Standard Chartered Bank. He was head Trade and Asset Finance NC Bank, where he developed strategies to position and be the leading asset finance house. He was also with Standard Bank, where he developed strategies to attract leading and asset finance in Uganda. He maintained an excellent working relationship with other stakeholders like the suppliers of the vehicles and insurance services. He was also with DFCU Group, where he developed customer relationships for the group's lease, mortgage and finance products. Finally, he was with Centenary Bank, where he did a lot of marketing and sold loan products provided. Thank you so much for hosting us at your office. Um, what is at the heart of your personal brand, Venom Mascot? At the heart of my personal brand, and I will bring it out in a perspective in, of the industry that I'm already in, I'm operating in, that is the automotive industry. In this industry, we sell cars. And when we're selling cars, we sell cars by their specifications. That's how you identify a particular brand, a particular vehicle, the kind of vehicle that you want to. And I look at myself as a product. Benham Mascot is a product. I am as good as a vehicle that I'm trying to sell. And when you talk about the specifications for a vehicle, so I believe for personal branding you must have personal specifications. So I, I will use the short form, the spec. S, I will begin with the segmentation. This is market segmentation. You have to know as an individual where you're going to operate, where you want to be known, and what you want to be known for. That you won't do everything and anything. You must be known in a particular sector. That is segmentation. P, in my acronym of SPEC, stands for perception. How people perceive you, for me, is the most important part when it comes to personal branding. E, which is environment that you operate in. That is the people who be with you all around the day, eight hours of work. How do you fit in that environment? It also helps on personal branding. Then C, which is the character. The character is one of the most important virtues that everyone must have. The character you have defines your personal branding. So I look at myself as a product, and when I look at myself as a product, every product must have a spec. That's how you differentiate product A from product B. Mm -hmm. That's how people make choices in whatever they want. It's not the, the choices customers look for products and they have always made informed decisions when it comes to product choice. So as long as individuals learn that they are products themselves, as long as individuals learn that they are products to their employers, they are products to their customers, then you have to create a spec that works for you. What I just mentioned is what works for me you can choose what works for you. Wow, okay, just to get it right. Did you did you say a brand is as good as the product it is trying to sell? True. Is this why you are wearing the same uniform just as the mechanics outside as they repair the cars? Because <laughs> most people wouldn't want to associate with the same. I mean, you are the deputy general manager of sales and marketing. Why do you choose to dress like a mechanic on a Wednesday? <laughs> it's creating a perception. Creating a perception when you're a leader, my position as a deputy general manager puts me in a position of leadership. And you know, there is always that feeling that, that leaders are so detached from the people they lead. And now you have to create a perception in the environment that you're in that will help you make the brand that you want to be. You want to be known as a person who is easily approachable. Yeah. You want to be known as a person who is not at the top, but you walk with the people that you lead. So, uh, today is a Wednesday and I choose to put on a mechanics uh, uniform because the people that actually make the company move on, this is after sales. 
after sales means a lot when it comes to branding. When you have a good product and you don't have its proper after sales, then the product ceases me. You waste a lot of money trying to market the product. And when the customer uses the product, you cannot have the good after sales simply because there's, the, the leadership is not in tandem with the people you just called mechanics, but they're my colleagues, mm -hmm. and that's how they feel right now. Mm -hmm. And that's how we create a perception. I told you the P, the perception. I told you the E, the environment that you want to operate in. You have to be able to brand yourself in a way that makes it easier for you to work with everyone that you lead. And in so doing, you achieve as a leader. You know, the reason why they say leaders, it's not all about the authority that you have on the people that you are trying to lead. It's being able to communicate to get the work done. Mm. And without saying a word, by just me being in a mechanics uniform, I'm communicating to my mechanics. Mm. In a bit to analyze branding more, let's talk about the importance of packaging, practical uh, packaging, right? It's not just the aesthetics. Like, how do brands <coughs> be clear on the functional need that is meant to be fulfilled, like deliver use? Packaging is very key to any product. Packaging is personal brand. Packaging is the, the first thing any product uses to promote its brand. Packaging must be taken so seriously because people believe what they see. Yeah. Then people understand what they are told. Mm -hmm. So in a market where you're not going to be able to communicate to everyone, where your communication channels are targeted to segments, to particular people. It doesn't mean you as a marketer, you might be misinformed and you target the wrong group, meaning you communicate to people that do not actually buy necessarily meaning that they are the only purchasers or the consumers of your product. So packaging alone talks to the people that you don't speak to. And that's where you find that, for me, packaging of a product, packaging of a person like myself, is very important regardless of where you be, because you don't know who will judge you by just the way you look. And that's packaging. Packaging is the way you look. Let's, let's, let's use the layman's mm -hmm. kind of language. Packaging is the way you look at a product and appreciate it. Yeah. That's it. That's communication enough. Yeah. But some products out there have such a beautiful packaging, but they don't match the product that's inside. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. But in most cases, you find that packaging is the stepping stone to selling. Yeah. Then, when you selling, when it's a stepping stone to selling, then most of us in the industry, you have to make sure that when you package something, mm -hmm. It's equally appreciated by the consumer. Yeah. It's not about just packaging. It's also what's in the package. Yeah. But when it comes to a consumer, consumers have different, uh, different behavior. Mm -hmm. And this behavior is very hard to be determined by you, the person selling the product. Mm -hmm. But what's most important is that packaging gets you to the consumer. Mm -hmm. And then after it gets you to the consumer, then you have to do more work to make sure that your product is of quality, depending on how you talk about it. You have to make sure that you're sincere to the client. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that the client, when he finally gets a, a well-packaged product, he doesn't get disappointed. Mm -hmm. So that is extra work you have to do as, mm -hmm. as a person in marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. You have to coordinate that your way of packaging of a product is in tandem with the real production and, and, and the product that is actually presented to the consumer. Right. I feel like you've answered my next question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the consumer demands today are evolving at a rapid rate, mm -hmm. so brands really need to respond and adapt quickly, you know? Mm -hmm. um, how important for all these brands, um, all these different marketing teams to work in harmony to achieve the general set objectives for the company it really improves the customer experience. You know, marketing as a department, marketing, if you're a person doing marketing, you don't work in isolation. The only thing is that because marketers make a lot of noise, the consumers think or the people outside think 
that they are the ones driving the product. Mm -hmm. But the product is driven from production, from all other departments. It has to be a management goal to know how you're going to market a certain product. Mm -hmm. So marketing gets out to people. But marketing before getting out to, to the public to market the way you see products being marketed is that they have to work through a chain of other departments, through sales. Sales must determine how much they want to sell mm -hmm. for marketing to get the marketing strategy right. for the number. Right. Marketing has to work with, in my industry, automobile industry, it has to work with after sales, the mechanics, the chief mechanic, to know what they need to talk about to not make the client be disappointed when he comes in with a defective product. Mm -hmm. So it's holistic marketing. We normally say that uh, a company has many departments, but we always feel the sales and marketing department is the only department of the company. Mm -hmm. It's the noise making department, but it, it works hand in hand with all other departments involved to make sure that what is brought through marketing to the consumer is actually managed by different departments and we have to be at the, at the, at the, same, at the same wavelength in talking about the product. We cannot afford, if you want to be a good sales or marketing person, you cannot afford to market something that you don't believe in. Right. You have to market a product that you personally confessed that is good. And when a client takes it, finally consumes or purchases that product, then you have to make sure that the clients have to believe in you. Otherwise, marketing, based on false pretense just to sell the product, it never works for companies. The marketing department works hand in hand with all the other departments and they agree on how they're going to approach the customers. So that's your, your general overview of um, your expectation of the modern marketers? Yeah, the, the, of course modern marketing has uh, become unique, you know, things change so quickly. It's a digital marketing nowadays. There is a lot of like uh, podcasts and it's now becoming one of the most influential ways to do marketing because you're basically talking to clients when you don't have them. Mm -hmm. Before it used it to take us to employ several sales and marketing agents to talk to clients. Now it's different. Just a WhatsApp message talks to thousands or millions of your potential clients. So marketing has revolved. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have to be careful about is the kind of message that we spread. Because right now messages get to millions of people in a shorter time than it was before. And uh, that's the modern way of marketing. So we have also to be very careful on the messages that we spread because social media has become almost the best marketing tool that the world has ever seen. In a minute, you have a thousand likes. Before, we use print media. Mm -hmm. How many people would buy papers? I, I don't know. They would print maybe 50,000 or 50,000 copies meaning 50,000 people are going to read through print media. Right now you use WhatsApp, you use Twitter, you use LinkedIn, and you get millions of viewers, millions of listeners, just in, a, in less than a minute. That's, that's, uh, modern marketing has completely, technology has completely changed the, the, the landscape of marketing. Yeah. yeah. Basically, readers and listeners are being converted into buyers. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about brand redefined. <laughs> I saw the new Navara can carry up to 1,002 kg, and depending on the specification level and, and thanks to its power to the new engine, it can tow a braked tailor from up to 3,000 kg as well. The load carrying capacity has also been upgraded significantly. How easy was it for you, Benon, to like transition from selling money and to selling cars? I, I thought this was a podcast about personal branding. But, <laughs> right. But you've given me a chance to actually do what I love most, that is selling cars. And if I get a chance to talk about a car, right. uh, specifically the new Navara that uh, is Nissan's latest uh, state of art pickup, right? Really <laughs> fine. It 
it's a vehicle that has come and taken the market by storm. Okay. We, we use it to sing trucks, let's say pick up trucks uh, for gardening, for farms, for, for road construction. But here we're talking about high performance, we're talking about comfort, we're talking about uh, efficiency, we're talking about everything that comes in a vehicle. This is where you get the SUV comfort in a pickup that can actually do other work like the normal pickups or normal light commercial vehicles do. It, it's now, the new Nissan Navara is not uh, uh, about going to the farms around, it's, it's about also comfort. You, you, you do work, the work you love in the comfort that you deserve. That's why we, we use the term, it's a rugged read find. It can go anywhere, mm -hmm. but again, in a different way. It's, it's the new Navara, you just need to take a ride in it and understand what I'm talking about. Okay. How easy was it to transition from banking to selling cars? Yeah. I'm a salesperson. Right. And everyone is born, I believe, salesperson. I look behind and see when you're a child, the selling skills you have as a child to get your parents to do for you almost everything that you want. That is sales. And it's only that when we grow up and we go through universities, we, we study a lot, then we, we, we start redefining ourselves. But me, I believe everyone is actually born a salesperson. And when you are a salesperson, you can sell anything. I was selling bank products, bank services, money and, and, and other services. Now I sell cars. It, I look at money as a product. We were selling money as a product to clients. Now I'm selling vehicles as a product to clients. So, selling is almost the same. Marketing is almost the same. What's different is actually the product that you're trying to sell. The only thing that you need to take a while to think about is the product that you're going to sell. Because as long as you understand the product that you're going to sell, then you can sell that product regardless of the industry or sector that, that you're operating. I believe once a salesperson, you are always a salesperson and you can sell any product as long as you get good knowledge of the product. It was a little easy for me because I went believing that I can actually sell any product and I'm doing it well right now. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and being a true leader in the industry. I believe we all have learned something new from Mr. Bernard Mascot. A real pleasure to have you today. You have been listening to the 8020 Marketing Podcast, brought to you and produced by 8020 Marketing Limited, locking the market in.